Maritime Made on Eastlink is presented by Nova Scotia Business Inc. Working with companies across Nova Scotia to be more successful exporters every step of the way. The New Scotland Brewing Company is a community-based microbrewery and live music venue based in downtown Dartmouth. They produce small batch beer, mead, and cider. Today, we're making their lager Alderney Dry. New Scotland Brewing Co. is all about, first, our community. We're very, very focused on groups and, and sharing and, and music and, and having a good time and, you know, cheersing your friend and uh, very, very deeply rooted in, in Dartmouth. And that's a, that's a very big component for us. New Scotland started originally as a clothing company. Uh, that was probably about seven years ago. Uh, about four years ago, we signed a lease on this place and uh, now we are all one company and we came together as not only a, a clothing business, but beer, cider, mead, uh, and a music, uh, a community event focused place. Mashing in a batch starts with 800 liters of 160 degree Fahrenheit water being pumped into the mash tun. The milled grain comes from the malt house in Lower Sackville. Nine 55 pound bags are unloaded from the company van. These are poured into the mash tun. A 12 grain blend called Munich malt is added too. After being stirred, the mixture is left to sit for an hour. The mash tun is hooked up to the kettle by a hose. To begin the transfer to the kettle, the pump is turned on and valves are opened. At this stage, the mixture is called the wort. Wort becomes beer when yeast is added. The sparge is programmed and turned on. The sparge sprays hot water on the mash, rinsing the sugar out of the grain. This will run until the kettle is full. It takes about an hour and a half. A whirlpool is hooked up to the kettle to spin the wort, otherwise it could caramelize. Meanwhile, the barley mash is shoveled out. It'll be used by local farmers for animal feed. Next, two bitter hops are weighed out and then added to the kettle when it begins to boil. Here, it's left to boil for an hour at 212 degrees. After 50 minutes, another hop called Irish Moss is added for clarity, along with more gypsum to help increase bitterness. Soon, it's time to transfer the wort to the fermenter. Cooling and knockout happens with a pump connected to the kettle. This spins the wort into a cone, sucking any solids into the middle to be left behind. The fermentation tank has been filled with 500 liters of water. A hose is extended, sanitized, and attached to the two units. Valves are opened and the pump gets to work. Around 500 liters of boiling wort flows from the kettle into the fermentation tank. As this happens, any overflow goes into a sanitation bucket as pressure is released. At this stage, the wort in the fermentation tank needs to cool before yeast can be added. Next. A pump is attached to the fermentation tank to circulate the liquid to help cool it down. This keg contains the pitching yeast and helps to get the yeast growing. CO2 is added to the fermentation tank, creating the head pressure. The flow is reversed to fill the keg with beer and it's shaken and made to flow out again, making sure all of the yeast is transferred. Then the fermentation tank gets oxygenated Water is purified on a double broiler and 30 grams of yeast nutrient is added. This is added to the fermentation tank through the keg. Each batch of Alderney Dry will ferment for two to three weeks. To test specific gravity, a sample of the partially fermented beer is poured into a 200 milliliter beaker. A hydrometer measures the sugar in the beer. This test happens daily to know how far along the yeast is. Once ready, it will be chilled for a few days and then gets canned, kegged, or stored in a bright tank. The company philosophy is you know, like very deeply rooted in tradition. So 
We all come from Scottish families. We live in Nova Scotia. We try to create something that Nova Scotians are going to identify with and get down with their with the roots with their roots. Uh, for me, uh, I remember from a very young age, my father making beer. Beer making was always a part of of everything I did. I, I, I met my wife with a backpack of homebrew at a party. Like it's just. It's always been part of what I did. And about five years ago, I decided or realized, oh, of all these things that I, that I do in my life, beer has always been there in the background as something that I did, that not many other people did. And just came to the realization that making beer is something that makes me super, super happy. To start the canning process, cases of cans are brought out of storage and coated by date. The date coder is set up and programmed. An inkjet cartridge is put in place. It quickly sends cans through and they fall into an awaiting bag. The canning machine is connected to the fermentation tank by hose. Before getting started, all surfaces are cleaned. A black bucket is filled with hot water and sanitizer and the date coated cans are dropped in. The fully automated canner is turned on, programmed and is ready to go. A couple of cans are filled for a quality test. A glass is poured for another quality check. Passing quality control, cans are manually added to the line where they're filled with CO2 to get rid of any oxygen and then filled with beer. The canner drops a lid on, seals it, then the can is rinsed. Afterwards, each can is weighed to make sure it was filled properly. And for the last step, labels are attached with a foot pedal operated roller. Once labeled, these 2,000 cans of beer may be stored in their fridge to be sold in store or packaged for export. If you go back hundreds of years, you know, there'd be a brewery on every street corner just making the beer for the people in that neighborhood. And that's where I wish it, it would go again, uh, where people people don't see it as something so far removed from what they're doing in their everyday life. And they actually have some sort of input and, and control over, or, over what they're getting from the brewing industry. And we have a long way to go to actually make a real dent in, uh, in the economy of beer. But it's really nice to see that, you know, there, there's millions and like $50 million in pay and benefits in the Nova Scotia economy coming from little breweries that are in the grand scheme of things so very small but are making such a big impact.